We offer free walk-in tech support at Micro Center computer stores. While we help many people with complex issues, we help just as many people with simpler questions. If learning the fundamentals of computing is what you want, you're the kind of person I have in mind for this PC 101 series. My name is Dave and I work at a local Micro Center store. In this video, I'll teach you a little about one of the most basic items in computing, the mouse. Here's where I'm going with this PC 101 series. In six brief how-to videos, I will address some of the common questions that people have. Starting with how to use a mouse effectively, I'll cover topics on using keyboard keystrokes, managing folders, managing files, backing up data, and searching the internet. So, let's get started. In part one, we'll focus on four aspects of the computer mouse. Configuring options, single and double clicking, left and right clicking, and using a scroll wheel. The history of the computer mouse goes back further than you may think. Several sources indicate that it was first invented in the 1950s to use with mainframe computers. It didn't get popularized, however, with Mac and Windows personal computers until the late 1980s. After that, the mouse really took off as an essential input device for computing. Today, there are hundreds of differently shaped mice, all built with different features to accomplish different things. From the standard two-button mice with scroll wheels as pictured here, to trackball mice that move the arrow on the screen not with the motion of your arm, but with your fingers or your thumb, to cordless devices designed for more freedom. That's not a phaser from Star Trek on the left. That's actually a presentation mouse that can be operated just by moving it in the air. The object on the right that looks like a cupcake is actually a wireless gaming mouse with lots of programmable buttons needed for actions in complex games. But we're going to keep it simple and I'm going to talk about the basic two-button mouse in this presentation. You have many options from which to choose in configuring your mouse. I'm using a, a Windows 7 PC for illustrations here, but the configuration options available and the means to get to them will be almost identical in Windows Vista and Windows XP. To do this, we need to go to the Windows Control Panel. With a single left button click, choose the Start icon in the lower left corner of the screen, and then choose Control Panel. For Windows XP machines, all you need to do next is double-click the mouse icon. For Windows Vista machines, single-click the word Mouse under the Hardware and Sound heading. In Windows 7, we will take an extra step as shown here. Click the Category link in the upper right corner. Now, single-click the Large Icons link in the short drop-down menu. Finally, single-click the Mouse link. Whether you're using Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7, you will arrive at a small window that is labeled Mouse Properties. This is where you go to customize your mouse operations to suit your needs. The first item in this window allows a user to switch the left and right mouse buttons to change which button is to be used for primary actions. This option is very useful to those who want to use their left hand to operate the mouse and still use their index finger for the primary button. Once this box is checked, it will immediately take effect. Notice how the mouse illustration shows the primary button, highlighted in blue, has switched from left to right. Your computer will keep this setting unless it is changed again. In the area immediately below button configuration is the control for double click speed. Some people's fingers are not able to quickly double click the mouse button as needed. Here is where the required double-click speed can be slowed down for convenience. You can test the double-click speed you've chosen in the test box and then adjust your speed accordingly. In the next tab over in the Mouse Properties window, there are a host of choices for the shape of your pointer. Just pick the one you like or keep the default pointer. Moving over one more tab in the Mouse Properties window will bring you to a menu for pointer options including pointer speed. That is, you can make the arrow move fast or slow in relation to the distance that you move the mouse on the mouse pad. Changes that you make here also go into effect immediately. Now that you know a little bit about configuring your mouse, let's talk about clicking the buttons. Clicking simply means choosing what the mouse arrow is pointing to. 
problem for beginners is that double clicking and single clicking are often confusing. So let's keep it simple. There are only a few things on a computer screen that require a double click to activate. The most common item is the desktop icon. You simply have to double click any desktop icon to open that application. Another common item that requires a double click is a file listed in a Windows Explorer list. Simply double click one of the files and the program associated with that file will open it automatically. Almost all other items on a computer screen require only a single click. These include the start button and any programs that are located on the taskbar found along the bottom of the screen. A single click also launches programs in the start menu. When you're browsing the internet, most web pages are loaded with links to other pages or features within that page. These links are usually underlined or highlighted in bold blue or both. Just a single click on the left or primary button is all it takes to activate that link. Now let's talk about the secondary button on the mouse, often simply called the right click button, unless of course you're left handed and you switch the configuration. What does it do? Try right clicking in the middle of the desktop screen. What appears is a menu. Once that menu comes up with a right click, you can left click to choose among the menu items. In other words, a right click brings up menus and a left click picks among the options on the menu. The same is true with about anything else you see on the computer screen. For example, if you right click a desktop icon, you bring up a menu of things that can be done with that icon. Then a left click picks one of the options. Once again, it's a right click that brings up choices and a left click that makes the choice. There is one more feature available on the modern computer mouse, and that is the scroll wheel. This wheel can be used to roll pages up and down in many different applications, especially in documents or on websites. Let me demonstrate this function by opening a Word document. With the document open, all I have to do is roll the wheel toward me and the page scrolls down. Conversely, by rolling the wheel away from me, the page scrolls up. Much easier than having to go clear to the side of the screen to grab the elevator and moving it up or down. But that's not all. The wheel is not just a wheel, it is also a button. By clicking it once, you create an anchor in the middle of the page. Then, simply moving the mouse slowly away from that anchor, down or up, will scroll the page down or up. Moving further away from that anchor will make the page scroll faster. This is very useful when the document is a large one. To return to normal mouse function, simply click the wheel once again and the anchor will disappear. So there you have it, PC 101 on using the mouse. I hope this helps with your computing, and thank you for your kind attention.